Hello, hello, and welcome to the Lowering Antibodies Workshop. Antibodies. Now, what are antibodies? Um, and what do we mean when we say, I want to lower my antibodies? So first of all, to understand your antibodies, you need to understand that 90% of thyroid uh, disease or 90% of people with thyroid disease it's actually have autoimmune disease. So even if you haven't been tested for it, I will say this time and time again, because sometimes people don't hear it until they're ready. So quite often we have autoimmune disease, but particularly when it's hypothyroid and it's Hashimoto's, doctors don't run the tests because you're not really in danger of getting really unwell. They tend to only run the tests if you, the antibody test to see if you're autoimmune derived, if they think that you've got Graves disease. Now they do this because when you have Graves disease, that is a form of, it causes hyperthyroidism, which means everything in your body runs fast. So that's your heart, your temperature regulation, your metabolism. So everything goes fast, which is dangerous, okay, for that to go on for too long. So that is, tends to be the only time when they run antibody tests. But I encourage you all to ask for antibody blood tests, no matter uh, when you are diagnosed or what you're talking about or how long you've, even if you've been hypothyroid and on thyroxine for 20 years, that was me. I didn't, uh, until I went to school and became a naturopath, it hadn't occurred to me. And it wasn't until uh, a lecturer said to me, Kylie, have you got Hashimoto's? I said, I have no idea. So I had to trundle back to my doctor and say, have we ever tested for Hashimoto's and she said no she said we can so she did so it's not that they're being mean or horrible when they don't test you it's just that they're a business too and with Hashimoto's they often can't do anything for you anyway more than what they're going to offer you with the Roxin or some sort of medication so they don't run it because what it's kind of superfluous to them sort of it, it really holds no weight for them but we need to know, okay? So we need to know because it's vitally important for how we feel. So that's why you should always ask for your antibodies. So let's talk about our immune system because that's what we're talking about when we talk about lowering our antibodies. All right, so our immune system lives in our gut, in our gut tract, right? That's why everyone's always hammering on about gut health. Our gut tract is everywhere from here to the other hole at the other end. That is your gut tract, right? It's not just your gut as in your stomach pouch. It is everything. It is the colon. It is the small and large intestine. It is the lot. Okay, so just so that we're clear, uh, that is where, and our immune system mostly lives down in the uh, large and small intestines, but that is where our immune system lives, is in our gut tract. Okay, now its job, its main job is to uh, protect us from pathogens, viruses, molds, chemicals, parasites, chemicals, any nasties. It's basic, that's his job, right? To protect us from that. Uh, and so what happens often is that um, our immune system gets out of control because we have so many things in our body that our immune system is on the attack over or looking for. All right, so it, it's, it sets our body into a fight or flight situation pretty much like all the time, which is why we feel horrid, okay? So the thing with autoimmune disease is once you have one, so it's really easy to get another and have several. And people don't understand that most of our common chronic diseases these days are actually autoimmune diseases. So some of the common ones that come along with thyroid disease are rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, um, vitiligo, alopecia, so hair loss, um, pernicious, pernicious anemia, sorry, so that's uh, vitamin B12 um, anemia, that's you can't produce vitamin B12. So, and uh, uh, something a lot of people don't understand is that cancer is actually an autoimmune disease. So, because uh, cancer cells are being produced and the immune system's going after the cancer cells. So it's, it's 
it's just about every chronic disease we have is autoimmune derived. If you do a little Google search of list the autoimmune diseases, there's actually hundreds of them. So it's quite um, astounding and something I wasn't even aware of until I dug deeper into this situation. So what causes the high antibodies? Um, when we have uh, an antibody test, it's a clue that our immune system's on the rampage for a start. So your doctor will run tests depending on what immune system or what, um, depending on what issues are at play. So uh, if diabetes, they'll run antibodies for their, for their pancreas. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, they'll run antibodies for the joints and so on. So they kind of know which ones go with which. So it's, but what can happen is what causes the high antibodies in the first place, so let's, let's sort of focus on thyroid disease, is that you may have been eating heaps of gluten or you might have got a douse of chemicals because you cleaned the shower with, I don't know, some really chemicalized thing. I'm just looking for ideas here. Uh, and then what happens is... Um, our immune system, it, it might get sucked into the thyroid. And so then our immune system goes, oh, I need to get rid of that. And so out will come the antibodies to kill that pathogen, that virus, uh, whatever it is, that bacteria that might be hiding in your thyroid. Um, and our thyroid is a real magnet for chemicals, let me tell you. So it'll suck in the chemicals with like that so our immune system will go that doesn't belong there and it will go after what's hidden in there and the thyroid's kind of collateral damage in the meantime it because it's trying to get at what's hidden in there so that's essentially how autoimmune disease works uh, and what causes the high antibodies it basically tells you an antibody test tells you how much of um, on alert and on attack your immune system constantly is. So obviously the higher your antibodies, the more issues you've got inside you. It's not that your thyroid isn't working well or your immune, it's more that your immune system is out of control because it's going after things in your body. Okay. Um, so that's a really important distinction to understand. So where medical medium talks about Epstein-Barr virus, and this isn't the only root cause, um, but it can be a root cause. Viruses love to live in organs. They hide in organs until they need a live host. And then when the host is at its um, starting to get uh, not so well, run down, all that kind of thing, stressed, then it, it can grow. It grows from that. Okay, so uh, Epstein-Barr virus has a thing about living in the thyroid and how it's got an affinity to live in the thyroid, as does mercury. So mercury is a big one for going for the thyroid. Uh, and so the immune system will go after those items in the thyroid. And so the thyroid becomes damaged simply because the immune system is trying to get rid of those pathogens. Okay, so what's the solution here? So where we hear about build the immune system up let's let's you know bolster the immune system for winter and all that kind of thing that's like a huge mistake for people with autoimmune disease okay because that would be like um if you imagine at this point your immune system is like a hyperactive child okay so the last thing you want to do is boost that immune system up. You don't want to boost that hyperactive child. You don't want to give that child more candy, more sugar, or more of what's going to set it off to make it stronger, are you? No. So the, the trick here is that we want to calm our immune system, right? This is the key. And how do we calm our immune system, all right? So very basic stuff it's the kind of thing that's in most of the paperwork it's it's the same stuff over and over you'll start to see the more you go through this course the more you go through the protocols and the workshops and the thyroid pathway um, course you'll understand it's the same thing over and over and over but sometimes you need to hear it and see it you know 10 different times and ways before you're either a ready to do it or b you finally get it Okay, so don't be harsh on yourself if you just think, oh, what's that going to do? 
keep doing the work, keep listening to the, the coursework, keep watching the, the workshops, okay? Eventually, you'll put one thing in front of the other and things will start to happen for you. So antibodies. This is one of the big things that everybody comes to me and goes, oh, my antibodies are so high, my antibodies are so high. Um, but this is probably, in my book, one of the easiest things to bring down. It was one of the first things that I reversed. Uh, so when you hear of people saying they reversed their Hashimoto's, that's what they've done. They've reduced... They've reduced their antibodies to less than the um, the red line, which I think is less than 60 is, is considered fine. You can have antibodies at any given time to anything. So as long as it's less than 60, they're considered that you've reversed your Hashimoto's, okay? Apparently you will always have Hashimoto's and that's not likely, uh, that's understandable because uh, that's your weakness, right? That is now your weakness. So you could probably easily, if you go back to eating the way that you shouldn't be, or you go back to being exposed to chemicals or what have you, then it would be easy for those antibodies to rise again. Okay. So, but how do we bring those antibodies down? All right. Let me look through my list that I've got. Now this, this, printout is somewhere below this video so you can print it out and this is just the short version of what I'm talking to you about okay so reducing antibodies is all about calming the immune system as we've discussed all right this is key you've got to you've got to get this absolutely straight calm the system down Okay, so food, easiest place to start, removing gluten, dairy, soy and sugar and any known um, uh, intolerances that you have. Okay, so if you know that you don't feel good when you eat, um, I don't know, chicken. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that most people, oh, lettuce, here we go. 27% of people at any one time are intolerant to lettuce, Who'd have thought that you that would be an issue? But if you know that every time you eat lettuce, you feel a bit off or you get a headache or something like that, doesn't matter if it's healthy or not, remove it. Or another option, if you want to go down that road, uh, on, the webs, on my website, you'll see a button for a saliva hair test where you can actually get a list of the foods that you're intolerant to at the moment. Uh, and products as well. So um, check that out if you're that kind of person and you like to have a list to go off. So, uh, you know, I did mine, I'm due for another one soon, but I did mine six months ago and it came back with foods that I ate every day. And I'm talking about tomatoes, capsicum, uh, chicken. And I didn't eat chicken every day, but certainly tomatoes and capsicum I ate every day. Uh, so it came back with things like that, that I was like, oh, wow. Oh, my dishwashing detergent, right? So all of these things will cause an immune response because they weren't compatible with my body. So removing any of those sorts of things is like the biggest, easiest way. And we've already proven that gluten, no human is tolerant to gluten, um, there's actually big studies around this, but nobody listens to them because it's like, oh, that's interesting. It causes them an immune response in every single human out there, right? <laughs> so, which is fascinating. But some people feel it more than others, probably because we've got so, you know, those people have got so much more going on in their body. So, like, it's like that extra thing, the extra thing. It's, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing, right? So, food is the easiest place to start, simply. Okay, next thing after that is personal products. So makeup, hair dye, um, shampoo, conditioner, um, you know, deodorants, that kind of thing. So anything, so again, I liked the saliva test for that because it told me what deodorant was no good for me and which de deodorant I could use and that kind of thing. But if you're not going to do that, um, which is fine, you'd, do what you want to do, um, then you're going to have to look at maybe the best way to do it is to just try to find the most natural version of each one because the least amount of chemicals in your body, the least amount um, of antibodies will come out trying to sop up or attack those chemicals. So that means, um, you know, like anything that you, you use regularly, start with that. 
start to see if you can find an alternative that you like or that you're happy with. So I like to paint my nails every now and again, like um, makes me feel nice. Uh, but I use two brands. There's two brands. One's called Butter and one's called Sienna from Byron Bay. And they're, they're like, they're called nine free and seven free or something like that because they're, they're, they don't have formaldehyde. They don't have all the nasties in it. So again, and makeup, there's heaps of organic makeup on the market now that doesn't have the nasties in it. Um, there's heaps of organic shampoos, conditioners, um, that kind of thing. Also, no nasties, okay? Uh, I actually take a drive about 40 minutes drive away, which is nothing when you live in a city. It seems far here because it's like there's nothing for 30 minutes between here and there. Um, but I drive to see an organic hairdresser. So the hair dye that I use is totally organic. So anything that you're going to use on a regular basis, just try to swap it out for something that is more natural and less likely to set your immune system off, okay? It's honestly all these little things that build up to a big change. It's never the big thing. I, it, everything that you do for your thyroid is net, like I've done some amazing things. I've, I've spent three and a half weeks in India at an Ayurvedic hospital and that was amazing. I got massaged every day. I got fed all the right foods. I had doctors bring me herbs every day, you know, five times a day or whatever it was, um, which was fantastic. But it's never the big thing. It's the stuff you do every single day. If I had have come home from that uh, retreat and gone straight back to eating, not, I say straight back to because I've never eaten this way. But if I if I ate crap before that and I went straight back to eating crap after that, I may have bought myself a few months of better health, but then you're going to go straight back down that road, okay? So it's changing the habits you have every day that is going to make the difference. And honestly, the products we use will help enormously. So environmental products is the next one after hair uh, personal products it's you know fly spray up here there's a fly running around in this room as we speak so <laughs> it may come up on video you may not notice it because of my background um but my husband is a shocker for getting out the fly spray whereas so if I see a fly you can bet your bottom dollar I'm out there with a fly swat to try and kill that fly before my husband sees it <laughs> because it's less chemicals in the air okay so uh Anything that you can do environmentally. So what have I got on, on my list? Spray. So fly spray, mosquito spray. Up here at night, if you sit around and have barbecues, and you can tell by that background, there's mosquitoes in these sorts of places. So if you need to constantly spray yourself with mosquito spray, you need to find a natural alternative. There's a lot in the essential oil world. There's essential oils that um, will help hamper the, the mosquitoes. There's plants that you can plant around your, your decking. There's incense, sandalwood incense helps keep bugs away. So there's things that you can do without covering yourself in chemicals. Anywhere. So even pesticides in the garden, okay? So, you know, hubby likes spraying the weeds uh, instead of pulling them, that kind of thing. You're going to have to steer clear of that if you can. So do what you can where you can. Obviously, you have to kind of work within your family and within your surroundings, but basically anywhere that you can reduce toxins, chemicals, pesticides, that kind of stuff is going to be better for your immune system. Now, also keep in mind with antibodies <clears throat> that when you have a cold or a flu or something like that, if you are having your blood tests done at that time, that may spike your antibodies as well. So try to have your tests done when you're not sick. So don't just go along because you've got to have it done anyway. Because, um, yeah, that will unnecessarily spike your antibodies and may make your tests a bit out of, out of whack, So which will make you unnecessarily concerned. Now, I've had clients over the years that have struggled to bring antibodies down and we have found the strangest of causes eventually. You have to keep digging. Uh, but for one client, it was green tea that was bringing it, uh, keeping the antibodies high. And once that was removed, the antibodies um, lowered to normal amounts. 
So another person, it was eggs, I think. Um, so generally you can lower your antibodies just with food. So that would be, that's why that's always the easiest place to start because that's, that's the one that makes the most difference the quickest. Uh, post a question under this workshop um, that, you know, what have other people done to reduce antibodies? Because it is always something weird for the people that can't reduce them. Uh, as long as you're being honest with yourself about, you know, you've removed the gluten, the dairy, the cross-reactive grains is a good place to start as well. Uh, that's in the nutritional sheets uh, library. So as long as you've removed everything for a good, it, and it takes six months to remove gluten from the body. So from when you start, don't have your antibody tests for a good six months after the last one um, to get a good judge of what's happening with your body. And you have to remove it properly, not, not just, you know, once a week you can have cake or something like that you need to remove the gluten fully if you think that's the major issue at play for you it's it's tricky but it's not tricky okay lowering your antibodies is all about calming the immune system and getting things on the status quo and and nice and calm that's all it's about and so to do that we just have to find what are the things that are tweaking it out of control it's that simple all right, simple but hard, right? <laughs> so let me know how you go. If you struggle with it, again, post a comment uh, and tell us what you've tried removing so far and um, ask others for ideas of how they're going with theirs and how they lowered theirs, all right? So that's how we move forward with this healing. We help each other out. Excellent. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, workshop because it's an important one, as they all are. They all seem to be important. Everyone that I've put up, I think, has got to be important. So <laughs> but everything's important for us to feel well, which is what, what the name of the game is, right? Excellent. All right. Thank you for watching this workshop, and I will see you in the next one.